Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still in 1980, and today we're going to talk about Wizard and the Princess. Our story starts back at Online Systems. We previously talked about Online Systems in our Mystery House video. Capitalizing on the success of Mystery House, Ken and Roberta Williams began work on their next adventure game. The inspiration for this game came from the fairy tales that Roberta Williams would read as a child. Roberta came up with her own land, kingdom, and plot for the game. On the technical side, Wizard and the Princess is a big improvement over Mystery House. The game features color graphics making use of the Apple II's capabilities. But because the Apple II can only display six colors simultaneously, Ken Williams was able to program the illusion of more colors on the screen through dithering. Dithering is done by placing colors next to each other, allowing the human eye to blend the colors together to create a new color in the viewer's mind. Wizard and the Princess High Res Adventure No. 2 is a graphical adventure game, similar to Mystery House, released in 1980 by Online Systems for the Apple II. For the plot of the game, we will turn to the back cover of the game. It reads, You are a happy wanderer passing through a village in the land of Serenia, when you notice a large crowd. Being a curious wanderer, you saunter over to see what is going on. From the middle of the chaos, you hear a bell ringing. As you get closer, you see the town crier with a proclamation from the king of Serenia. Hear ye, hear ye, he cries. His Majesty King George has just suffered a terrible loss. His fair daughter, the Princess Priscilla, has been abducted by the great and dreadful wizard Harlan to his castle beyond the great mountains. The crowd is now hushed, waiting to hear more. The town crier then shouts, His Majesty offers half his kingdom to anybody who can bring the princess back safely. That is all he has to say, but it leaves you shaking. Not only are you a happy wanderer, but you love an adventure as well, and half a kingdom is a great reward. You decide to find her. But where are the great mountains? As you look around, you see no mountains, just a vast desert that seems never to end. You ask a villager where the great mountains are located, and he points to the north and tells you, there are a great many dangers on the way to the great mountains and the wizard Harlan is very powerful and bad. You thank the villager for his information and start off to the north. As you enter the desert, you check your belongings. You're carrying a flask of water, a small knife, a loaf of bread, and a blanket. Not much for such a long journey, but it would have to do, for you have no money. And so, you are on your way. With the game now properly introduced, it's time to play Wizard and the Princess for ourselves. And here we are in the game. As you can see, the game has to load. We are in the Wizard and the Princess, though. You are in the village of Serenia. Around you is a desert. Enter command. So, as you can see, everything is going to be very similar to how it was in Mystery House. But in this game, we are going to have color. As you can see, there's a lot of dithering going on. So, everything kind of is the same color, but not because of the spacing of the colors. Uh, we'll see that as we continue, you see that the Apple II has to actually draw everything, sometimes line by line. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's play Wizard and the Princess. Uh, we are gonna start by heading south. And everything gets drawn. You are lost in the desert. Already I am lost. Hooray! Yeah, the desert is an easy place to get lost. Uh, you can see there's kind of a rock on the screen. That rock is important. However, every rock except for one is going to have a scorpion behind them. And we need to find something else. So it's going to take us a little bit of wandering around the desert to find that one rock that does not have a scorpion. We're going to start by going south for a second time. And we're going to still be in the same desert. Uh, notice that there's no rock this time now. So it's a different screen. Then we need to go east. And there we are again. And they drew the rock at the end. That must mean it's important. 
Let's head south. All right, we're, we're doing all right here. And then we will head east. And there's another rock this time, and we will go south. Now this will take us to the screen that we want to go to. I should point out that once again, this is not the original version of the game. This is a later 1987 release, uh, but it kind of just kicks me right into the game. So it's the game. You're just going to have to believe me on that one for now, though. Um, well, obviously we're in Serenia, so it must be right. Uh, here we want to get the rock. This is the rock we want to get. So we went south twice, east, south, east, and south. And that's how you get to the right rock. Uh, this is the only clue that they give you on the manual, is that look behind the rock, one of them doesn't have a scorpion, basically, is what it tells you. Uh, but we get the rock here. And we're still lost in the desert, but no scorpion came out to kill us. Hooray! Now we need to try to get out of here. So north... It's going to take us a little bit to load everything. West. And we're going to go north twice. And hopefully we'll find something interesting there. We do! It's a giant snake! And it just says you are in the desert. But we're not lost in the desert anymore. That's new. We're going to throw the rock. You hit the snake on the head with a rock and kill it. Hooray! Let's go north again. And then we're going to drink our water. Yeah, it says you had better drink some water, so we're going to drink our water. We did have it on us. But now our flask is empty. That's probably a problem. Let's head east from here. And here we can find a stick. I'm going to get that stick. That stick looks useful to me. Now, whenever we uh, encounter a rattlesnake, I can use the stick to make it go away. Or, well, you know, to kill more snakes. <laughs> Let's head north from the stick. We're still in the desert. There's a lot of desert going on here. We'll head west. And here we can find something on the ground. There is a locket here. Let's get the locket. That's probably important for something. All right, we're starting to think like adventure game players. If they give you something, it's probably important. So grab it every time. Let's head west from here. And there's a note here. Um... Can I just read the note, or are you going to have to make me pick it up? Read note. You don't have it. There's a note here. All right. Get note. Read note. There's some strange writing on the note. You are in a desert. I did say read, not look. Can I look at the note? Is that going to be different? Well, I mean, at least they let me look at it. Um... We'll hold on to that for now. To me, it kind of says Nulud, but I don't think that's a word. It's not. Um, from the, the note, we want to head south. And here's another snake. Oh, no, it's trapped on a rock. Let's get the rock. We'll be nice to this skate. You, wow, it beeped at me. When you remove the rock from the snake's tail, the snake looks at you and says, I am the king of the snakes, and to repay you, I will give you... Uh, not that button. Enter? Enter. I hit space, and that didn't do it. And to repay you, I will give you a magic word. Hiss. Then he leaves. You are in the desert. Now, apparently, don't hit space bar. Hit the, the enter button. Doesn't understand that. Okay. From here, we want to head south. We have a magic word. We also have a very buff-looking cactus. Then we want to look at the hole. I mean, there's a hole there, so let's take a look at that. What do we have in here? There's a cracker here! That's weird, but we're gonna, we're gonna get it. We're gonna follow the rules. If you give it to me, I'm gonna take it. 
Hooray, we have a cracker. We're saved. Let's go north. And we'll go north one more time. I mean, we're seeing different screens. Oh no, there's a rattlesnake here. You'd better watch out. You use the stick. That's why we got it. You hit the snake on the head with the stick and drive it away. So we don't kill it, but we make it go away. We're more humane now that we advanced from rock technology to stick technology. I've, I've already forgotten where I was. I think we need to head west from here. And then north. Does that take me where I need to go? It does. This is the cab... Ca chasm. There we go. I want to say cavern for whatever reason. You're at the south edge of a deep chasm. There's a cottage and some woods on the other side. Well, let's see what I can do. Um, they gave me the magic word, right? Let's try that. Hiss. You suddenly turn into a snake. You're at the south edge of a deep chasm. There's a cottage. Yeah, that's probably not what I wanted to do. Can I turn back? Nothing happens. Can I say the magic word now? Hocus. All right. Then we'll head north. Am I? And I've changed back into myself again. So using hiss didn't do anything bad for me. Um, you're at the north edge of a deep chasm. There is a bridge spanning the chasm. Hooray, we made it out of the desert. Plus, I know I can turn into a snake. So that'll probably be useful at some point. Yeah, hocus is the magic word there. Um, you, you, we're going to be back to magic words that we used in Colossal Cave Adventure. But, yeah, that's the first one. All right, so in the woods, we want to go north. There's a little gnome here. I don't know how little that is, but we'll let him... Ooh, he's purple. Like, even his skin color is purple. Um, we'll, we'll let him finish drawing in, and I kind of regret that. Uh, look! The little gnome grabs some of your things and runs away with them! You're in the woods! I don't like gnomes. Gnomes are tricky. Let's head east from here. And then we're going to ignore that hole and go north. And here... You're in the woods, there is a bank with a small crevice in it. This is where it's useful to turn into a snake. Then we can go hole, go hole. And that leads us into a small little tunnel here. Oh, that is a loud beep. You're in an underground tunnel. There is a small crevice going to the outside here. Sunlight is coming in through the crevice. Well, there's only so much we can do here. Uh, let's head south. That's the direction that we're actually facing here. The directions change on you a lot in this one. You're in an underground tunnel. There's just enough sunlight coming through the crevice to see. We'll head south again. You've changed back into yourself again. So it lasts, what, two turns? Um, right, same thing. Um, we want to go south a third time. You're in an underground tunnel. There is just enough sunlight coming in through the crevice of sea. There is a little door here. All right. Well, he uh, seems to have dropped my stuff. This is very important. I need my bread. All right. We started with that loaf of bread. That's what the intro gave us. There's a little door here again. Then we can get the cracker. I don't know how I'm going to deal with the beeps here. I, I might just turn it down so you guys don't think I'm crazy, but part of me says just to mute this whole thing. All right, then we'll get the locket. All right. Once we have all that, we can unlock the door. Okay, the door is unlocked. Then we can open the door. Once again, everything's a bit of a process here. You're gonna beep at me again, aren't you? Yep. Nothing new either. You just beep at me to beep at me. All right, let's head south. And we're inside. You're at the bottom of the stairs. There's a little door here. Let's see, what do I want to do here? I've lost my spot. Um, then we want to go up. 
That's the way we want to go. You're in, inside a tree. There are stairs leading downwards. There's a hole leading outside. Uh, let's go to the hole. Go hole. And we made it back to the woods. See, that's the hole that we kind of ignored earlier. But we got our stuff back and we cleared the gnome, I guess you could say. He stole our stuff. We got it back. And now we're fine and we're not going to deal with him anymore. Uh, let's head north, or sorry, east. We'll head east first, and then we'll head north. You're in the woods. There is a parrot sitting on the tree. Well, that must be what Polly wants. Let's give Polly a cracker. The parrot eats the cracker and is very grateful. He sets you a vial of liquid on the tree branch. He sets a vial of liquid on the tree branch for you. There is a vial here. You are in the woods. There is a parrot sitting on a tree. All right, well, we're nice. They're nice back. Let's get our reward. We got ourselves a vial. All right, nothing new there. So let's move on. We'll head south. Yeah, you kind of need to map this out as you go if you're playing this for the first time. Uh, we'll head west. Then west again. And then we will head south. No, north. All right, there we go. You're in the woods, there is a babbling brook here. So then we're gonna get the water. Your flask is now full of water. You're in the woods, there is a babbling brook here. All right, so then we can head south. And west. And there's a lion. <laughs> Things are not going good on this adventure. That's not normally the color of a lion. You're at the edge of the woods. You see the ocean. Well, I should probably deal with the lion that you didn't mention first. So we're going to give bread to the lion. The lion wolfs down the bread and then walks away. You're at the edge of the woods. You see the ocean. The, the lion wolfs, does it? Okay, once that is done, we can pass by heading north. And here we can make it to the beach. There is a rope here. You're at the edge of the ocean on a beach. There is a rowboat here. Well, rope is vital to everything, so let's get a rope. Those are always going to be good. Nothing new there. So then we can go on to the boat. There is a hole in the boat. Well, there go our plans of escape. Oh. There is a there is a hole in the boat. You are in the rowboat on the beach. Okay. Um, do I do I have that? Use blanket. You stuff the blanket into the hole. Let's hope it works. You are in the rowboat on the beach. I don't remember them saying that I had a blanket, but I've had a blanket apparently, and the gnome didn't take it. I don't remember getting it any other time either. But hooray! We had a blanket. Like, honestly, is there like an inventory thing here? Flask of water, a stick, a pocket knife, a note, a large rock, a locket, a full vial, a rope. So apparently if I had done that, I would have known that I had a blanket. But that is weird because I don't remember picking that up at any time. All right, so once we have plugged the boat, let's head north in our boat. You're in the middle of the ocean. That's good. Hopefully the blanket can just absorb the whole ocean as we go. We're going to go north again. You're hot and thirsty. I think you had better drink some water. Luckily I have that. So we'll drink some water. That's much better. Now your flask is empty. You're in the middle of the ocean. Remember, don't drink seawater. Uh, we're going to head north. There was a little island there, but it's, it's kind of moving over there. So let's head east. Still over there. East. 
and east one more time. And we've made it to another island. You're in a, in a rowboat on the beach of an island. Let's go to the beach. That gets us off the boat. As everything draws in for me. You are on a beach on an island. I've gathered that. There's also an X there that you don't seem to want to mention. Let's head north. Ah, oh, there's a path here. You're in the jungle of the island. The path goes north and south. We'll go north again then. Okay, well, there's more going on here. There's a tree house up in a large tree. The path goes east and south. I honestly did not think it was a tree house. I thought it was just a house behind a tree. So, good thing they described that to me. Um, did I, I went north twice, right? So let's go east. There we go. There is an anchor here. That's what I'm looking for. We're probably going to need that. You're on the beach on the island. Let's get that anchor. Then we'll head back west. And that takes us back to the treehouse thing. Uh, we're going to tie the rope. To what? That is a good question. Uh, you're in the jungle of an island. There's a large treehouse and a large tree. Uh, a path goes east and south. But remember that they're asking us what to uh, tie the rope to. So we have to type in to anchor. The anchor is tied to the rope. You're in the jungle on the island. There's a tree. Yeah, all the same stuff. So we have tied it. Then we're going to throw the rope. The rope is thrown over the branch. Hooray. Now we can, you know, probably climb up that. That sounds good. Let's go up. This is a very fancy looking tree house. You're in the tree house. Not going to mention what, what we have there. Give me the shovel. And then we can head out. That is what we needed from here. Let's head south a couple times. We got our shovel using an anchor. Adventure game logic. It, it makes sense in the moment, but as soon as you take a step back, it's very strange. But we have moved south twice. Now we're back to the beach. Let's dig on that X. You have uncovered a treasure chest. Hooray. We got a thing. There it is. It took a while to load. You have uncovered a treasure chest. You're on a beach on an island. Well, let's open that up. A pirate jumps from behind a tree. Shiver me timbers. Trying to steal my treasure. He grabs the chest and runs. You're on a beach on an island. So anticlimactic after what happened. Uh, he ran away. Let's chase him. East. Didn't, they didn't say where he ran, but he ran east. Uh, then we can go north. Then we can go west. And here we can find a cave. There's a cave here in the middle of the island. A path goes east. Let's go into the cave. And we have ourselves that treasure chest. Let's open it. You're in a cave. The cave ends right here. They don't tell me anything really all that descriptive. Look in the chest. There's a small harp here. We risked our lives for a small harp. I'm going to get it. All right, we got that. So let's head out of the cave. That would be north. Then we can head east. Then we can head north again. I think, yeah, I'm, I'm moving along here. All right, so you're on a beach on the island. Uh, once we get here, we want to drink the vial. When you drink the liquid, your arms, when you drink the liquid, your arms turn into wings. 
We're gonna beach on an island. Well, that's a little unexpected. Let's head north. And we fly. You're on a beach. Yeah, we're gonna go north again. You have changed back into yourself again. There is a beautiful sapphire ring here. Once it loads, you're in the foothills. Hooray, the foothills. Let's get that ring. That's probably going to be useful for something. We're just in the foothills. All right, let's move north. How you doing? Who is this? Uh, you are in the mountains. There is an old peasant woman here. Talk woman. Can I do that? She warns you of the giant who lives in the mountains. She doesn't seem too friendly, but at least she's given me useful information. Um, we want to go west. There is a slight drizzle and there's a rainbow. You're in the mountains. Uh, let's go toward the rainbow. There is a gold coin here at the end of the rainbow. I knew it. Let's get the coin. Is the leprechaun going to get me now? The sun came out. I stole a coin and the rain went away. Hooray. Let's head north. You're at the east edge of a deep gorge. There is a rickety bridge crossing the gorge. I don't think it can hold much weight. So here's a, a kind of a, a command that you can use to get rid of everything. Right. Enter first. Uh, Lucy. Everything you are carrying disappears. You have nothing left. Hooray. Let's head west. And we crossed it, thanks to the fact that we had no weight, additional weight on us, I should say. We're at the west end of a deep gorge, we'll head west again. And then we'll head north. Here in the mountains, there's a cave here. Let's go into the cave. And... All my inventory is here. That is a lot of inventory. You're in a cave, it ends right here. All right, so what you can do here is get all and just pick up everything. Hooray. Let's move north out of the cave. Yeah, Lucy just moves all your inventory there. South. There's some magic words here. That's always fun. West again. And here we can encounter a giant. You're in the mountains. No, no, nothing about the giant here. Um, what we can do is play the harp. I swear I never make these typos when nobody's watching. All right, the giant is a great lover of music. He thanks you for the harp and leaves with it. I, I didn't say give harp, I said play harp. Well. I had to show it off first, I guess. You're in the mountains. Hooray! We can now move forward. Let's move move north. Move north again. There is a peddler settling wares for one gold coin each. How lucky for me that I have one gold coin. You're in the foothills on the north side of the mountain. All right, so there's a lot of things here. Some of it looks more useful than others. Uh, the one that we want ugh, is the horn. Buy the horn. I know that one didn't look particularly useful, but you knew it wasn't going to be the knife, right? <laughs> that one looks far too useful. That can't be the one that... It, that we need. Uh, let's move north away from the peddler. Hey, there's a castle here. You're in the foothills on the north side of the mountains. You see a castle in the distance. Let's head toward it. You are in front of the castle. There is a moat around the castle full of crocodiles. Where did you get crocodiles in this kind of European style? Whatever, it, it's a thing. Uh, we'll play the horn. And they've lowered the drawbridge for us. 
In front of the castle, there's a moat around the castle full of crocodiles, but the crocodile disappeared. It doesn't like drawbridges. Let's move north, and we will head into the castle. Oh, we're making progress today. You're in the entry hall of the castle. There are doorways to the north, west, and south, which is behind you. That's nice of them to, to tell us. All right, we're going to start by heading north. You're in a maze of passageways. Passages go south and west. Hooray, we're already lost in a maze. Let's head west. Uh, passageways goes nor north, east, and west. We'll go west a second time. Uh, passages go east and west. We'll go west a third time. All right. You're in a maze of passageways. Passage... Passages go north, east, and west. We'll go north this time. In a maze of passages that go east and south. Um, we'll go east once. Uh, this time they go east, west, and south. We'll go east a second time. I have to say this not only to keep track, but uh, in case anybody's trying to follow along. All right, passages go north and west. We'll go north once. Then passages go in all directions. Uh, we'll go north a second time. All right, passages go west and south. We'll go west. And then we'll go north. All right, then we will go east once twice three times all right we've made it you're in a small empty room there is a passage behind you uh we're going to use the knife that we've had since the beginning <laughs> to pick the lock yeah that's what we use the knife for you pick the lock you're in a small empty room there is a passage behind you we're gonna open the door And then we're going to head east. All right, we're making progress. We made it through the maze. That's something. You were in a short hallway. Let's climb up the stairs. You're in a tower. There are stairs leading down. Well, let's go down the other side. Well, actually, no, we didn't go down the other side. We went down the same way. You're in a short hallway. Let's go up. This is actually what we need to do, though. Hey, there's something here this time. You're in a tower. There are stairs leading down. This is one of the things. Uh, there's so many things in this one. Uh, rub ring. Things that, like, I don't know how you figure out on your own. You know what I mean? But this time we're going to rub the ring. You turn into a cat. Leap up and eat the bird. You are yourself again. You're in a tower. There are stairs leading down. Okay. Let's head down. <laughs> I turned into a cat. I ate the bird. I turned back to normal. There was a point to that, yes? Yes, there was. We'll head down. Now we can go east. And here's a giant frog. Well, it's just a normal frog, really. But there it is. You're in a tiny room. So what do you do? You kiss the frog. The frog becomes a princess. There is a princess following you. I've never heard of kissing a frog to turn into a princess i've always heard it being the prince but you know what i i enjoy the the change of pace here a bit uh yeah if you didn't catch the bird um kissing the frog would not have turned her into a princess so there's that all right let's head east from here and the princess is continuing to follow me which is nice you're in an east west hallway uh we'll go east one more time Princess is following me, but she's not just on the screen here. There's a room with the closet. Well, let's open the closet, see who's waiting to come out of there. They're in a room with a closet. Look at the closet. Why, why aren't you showing me anything in the closet? It's very suspicious. There's a pair of shoes here. There's a princess following you. You are in a room with a closet. No, I'm in the closet right now. Uh, we're going to get the shoes. We're going to wear the shoes. Um, okay, so now we have them on. Does the princess say anything about this? 
No way. We can't even talk to the princess. No. Uh, so once again, we're going to use a magic command here, and that would be whoosh. You're transported to Serenia. There is a princess following you. It just saves us so much time. Uh, let's head north. Oh, the you're transported to Serenia. There is a princess following you. You're in the village of Serenia. Around you is a desert. I'm gonna head north. Congratulations! You have safely returned the princess to Serenia for this outstanding feat. You have been declared a junior master adventurer. Hooray! We did it! Green Valley Publishing thanks you for playing the wizard and the princess. You're in the village of Serenia. Yeah, this, this particular version is Green Valley Publishing, but it's the same game. All right, so we have done it. I think the game just starts over. That's all we get. That is the game. So with the game now played, let's talk about how the game holds up today. Playing the game today is a little weird. Of course, it's going to feel dated having the computer load each and every screen. Uh, so the technical achievement of turning in a full color game in 1980 obviously isn't going to bear as much weight as it did then uh, playing it now. Uh, so it's hard to kind of look at that and go, hey, that's great, there's color, uh, because the color is very clearly dated. It looks old. Um, so it's hard to say that this is a good game to play today. It's an interesting game to play for sure, but uh, would I say that I had a lot of fun playing it? Probably not. Um, there was a lot of waiting that I had to do. Um, just the technical aspects of the game were a lot of a detraction for me as I went through the game. Uh, then, of course, there is just the core gameplay of the game, which is very similar to things that we have played before. We have played Colossal Cave Adventure. We've, of course, played Mystery House. I would even um, lump in Adventure kind of into this as a game that is an example of this style of game. Um, but really, if we're just looking at Colossal Cave Adventure and Mystery House, I would say this one, although much harder, is not necessarily harder because there are puzzles to figure out. It's just kind of more random and y you just kind of have to guess and hope. Um, I don't know if anybody would think to rub a ring. Maybe you could wear a ring. Maybe somebody tells you to rub the ring. That kind of thing just kind of keeps happening in these games. It's starting to become a style of Roberta Williams to have kind of obscure things to put a stop in the player's progress. It's not necessarily um, a difficult thing to figure out as much as it is just, I don't know what to do. You haven't given me any clues. I guess I'll just type in random phrases and hope that it works. You know, you come across a door and I don't know how many people are going to think I can uh, lock pick it with a knife, but that's what you have to do. Um, plug a hole in a in a boat with a blanket, um, I can almost guarantee you that that would not work for the um, for the rowboat. I have looked over my notes, and it does say that uh, we actually do have that blanket when we start, but I just didn't remember it. It just didn't seem important, and so it was lost. And then, you know, for me, the the rowboat blanket thing, it's obvious that it wouldn't work to me. Uh, there's no such thing as, uh, as far as I know, as a waterproof blanket. You know, I always picture blankets as soft and cuddly, and that's not going to help you plug a hole in a boat. But uh, maybe it's a different kind of blanket than, you know, I'm used to, but they didn't describe it at all. Um, for me, there were a lot of issues like that in the game. And although it was still interesting for me to play of the games that we have played of this style, uh, I would argue that this is among my least favorite, if not my least favorite of the bunch. Uh, but it is important because of what happens afterwards. So if you are interested in what happens afterwards with this game, then this is something that is um, worthwhile to play or at least worthwhile to watch. But is it recommended that I um, say that you should play this game? I would say no. I don't think that this is a game that most people would want to go back to. Um, and for those that are interested in what happens afterwards, probably a brief summary of the plot is good enough. But overall, that's kind of where my thoughts are, is that it's not necessarily worth going back to, with the exception of 
um, the plot of the game, which is, this is the first game that we've had with plot, so I have to give it some credit, but it's a very uh, generic and basic plot. Um, the first one that we've actually played through the plot instead of just kind of, it exists, and then it's not relevant to the game at all, like Adventure, where it's just, there's a there's a wizard, and go get the things and bring them back. Okay, <laughs> Same with Colossal Cave Adventure. It's go get the things and bring them back. Technically, this one is go get the thing and bring it back. Uh, but at least it's somewhat of a plot as to why we have to get those things. So I'm going to consider this one the first one with a plot. So I have to give it some bonus points for that. But from a modern standpoint, um, the the plot is almost non-existent. And so it's hard for me to recommend this. And that is my modern review. When Wizard and the Princess was released, just like Mystery House, it was released in plastic bags with the floppy disk and the instruction sheet. Also like Mystery House, Wizard and the Princess proved to be a success. By June 1982, the game sold 25,000 copies, becoming one of the better selling games of the time. In total, the game would sell 60,000 copies the first game with full-color graphics to sell that many copies. Once again, reviews of the game at the time of release are hard to find, but once the reviews did start trickling in, the reviews were positive. The reviews approved of the graphics and the theme, although the difficulty of the game was seen as high and frustrating. With now two hits on their hands, Ken and Roberta Williams would continue to work on computer graphical adventure games, and we will continue to follow their careers as we continue. The game's lasting impact would be one that is important, but is largely forgotten. The Land of Serenia and the plot of Wizard and the Princess would influence future games by the couple, but we will talk about that more when we get to those games. And that will do it for the story of Wizard and the Princess for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll go on the defense.